ReZero Farm. It's from Mr. It's Kish. ReZero is not the same. Mm -mm. If I saw a title like that, I'd probably want to click on it. I'd be like, what do you mean it's not the same? I need to know why it's not the same. YouTube stuff. Let's get it. ReZero is not what it used to be. Already mm. establishing that the age of dog water isekai worlds is over. Has okay, okay. What, uh, what isekais did he, did he shit on here? I don't know any of these, actually. All three, I have no clue. Over. Wait, wait. Does, what does the border say here? My hero sucks. My hero sucks. My <laughs> Wait. He's shitting on isekai. Sh mid isekais. But actually, he's actually shitting on My Hero Acad Academy based. It's over. It has risen to the heights of anime like One Piece by taking its world building and character development to mm. the next level. See I like the little comparison with... Uh, this is Water 7, right? The Water 7 arc, and this is Kaku. Yeah, the city kind of very much resembles, like, Pristella and Water 7. There's a lot of similarities with it. To world building and character development to the next level. Season 3 is shaping up to be one of those game-changing seasons, like the mm -hmm. Shibuya incident or the Pain Invasion that redefines everything we thought we knew about the series. Compared to ReZero Season 1, which had high highs and some low lows. Yeah. And then ReZero Season 2 that just puts you in a carousel at a million miles per hour and was like eggnog is desaturated amelia hisoka is aizen amelia is insane and yeah rem? who's rem he's rem uh -huh. that never gets old but it kind of does though wait 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 who is rem r-e-m do you guys know this joke i actually haven't seen this one this is actually pretty clever r-e-m stands for rapid eye movement which is a cycle during sleeping, which is a very important phase of sleep to make sure that you're deeply rested. So REM sleeping, she gone, R-E-M. Never gets old, but it kind of does though, but for the one time, right? So let's see, let's see, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, wait, what do you say here? She grab, she bite, she even sleep at night, but she'll never be super his wife, except in the if greed routes. Right, so ReZero season three shows that it's different immediately with Subaru and the gang starting things off a year after the events of season yes, two. Sir. And it already feels like the beginning of a One Piece arc. We check in with every character. Amelia is leading, Otto is being a badass, and Rem is sleep leaving. I accidentally said if greed arc, you're right. It's if sloth arc, the wife, that's the if sloth route. Our MC, Subaru training. And that left me thinking that maybe, just maybe, his weak and sorry ass was actually going to be able to throw some hands this season. No, no, I think that Subaru, like, is very physically capable from episode one of ReZero. If you saw him literally fight against Elsa, yes, Elsa might have been playing around, but, like, his, he's moving like Jackie Chan. He's already very strong. And, like, this little training, I'm not sure how much it's going to matter. It's funny that he has a whip as well, but for, like, a year, he's been training on the training course. So, it's, like, I think that we can, at this point, understand that, like, he is, like, very above average in terms of like physical caliber his stamina running strength it should be really good he literally outran the great rabbits what the fuck was that he literally outran the great rabbit in the finale episode of season two how the fuck did that work was actually going to be able to throw some hands this season but for a series like ReZero, where all the characters have different motivations and ideas it's a huge decision to take a time leap like that i know some of the hardcore anime fans hate time skips you know the type of fans that buy body pillows because they feel it's a little bit plot devicey but in a universe as sick as ReZero, it's so dope in my opinion it feels like we're entering a new landscape i want to know what everyone's yes. up to and how much has changed and ReZero exactly that one year time skip is huge and it really hypes up a priscilla has done because like Amelia's fam like Amelia's camp we've done so much that we should be like basically number one in terms of rankings for this royal selection but apparently Priscilla is like on our clout too so that really makes us guess like exactly what has she accomplished over the past year illustrates this by getting its one piece on and the gang gets sent to rendezvous with the purple hair candidate Anastasia and Pristilla and boys I wanted to get up and scream this is what I've been waiting for in all the other seasons we yeah. kept on being told about the world behind the candidates but we had never been shown much on it and now 
Wow, a person that appreciates the world building for what it is and doesn't think that it's fucking filler or like recap. It's actually mind boggling the amount of people that thought like the 90 minutes were just filler pad doesn't matter. But it's like the most important thing to set the stage. Now we're actually going there and the whole yep. journey felt like the start of a Pokemon movie. You know what I mean? And shout out Garfield for Naruto running there. At least someone in the anime world still has respect for Naruto. But when we are- What is this scene? This scene is the one where Nicholas Light was getting into some heated drama with the Boruto fans too, right? Like, there's something very viral about this scene that really pisses a lot of people off. So, but when we arrive in Priscilla, we realize ReZero had fallen victim to one of the best tropes in anime, the Venice City from yeah. Water 7, Michelin, Neo Venzio, yes. Archantia, the Hoenn region, you name it. I fucking mispronounced half of those. Anime loves going between this and the floating fortresses in the sky. And why do you ask? Why do they keep on going back? Be I don't know. Just hype shit happens whenever we go to towns like this. Like, Water 7 is one of the arcs that I always think about any lobby, right? Like, it's so fucking peak. Because they're fucking badass. That's why this... And I think beyond it just looking badass, there is a significant um, disadvantage that we have because this place is supposed to be a trap. What are they trapping? Back in the past... Maybe it was a dragon or the Witch of Envy. I don't know. There's a lot of different theories. Maybe it could have been one of the great, the great beasts. Who really knows? But like this, we are, we are the ones that's trapped. We are literal ants trapped in here as the Arc Bishops have now. I don't know how much planning they've done, but it's looking like we are the ones that's trapped in. Badass, that's why this looks sick. And with the camera movements and how they showed it off, it really feels like you're walking through the city. But ReZero feels like they've taken some more time to understand how to make you feel immersed besides the basic tropes that anime uses. The background feels more detailed, the sounds mm. feel more in sync, and the random interactions make you feel like you're walking through an open world game between the song. Yes, even like the little details of like what a land dragon is and what like a water dragon is, right? This is like a nice little scene. And like beyond that, Pristilla being like a neighboring, uh, it borders Karadagi, which has a lot of like Japanese influence, specifically like the Kansai dialect and like that kind of architecture because of Hoshin of the Wilderness. And it really fleshes out the world even more. In a world game, between the songs and the randomness going on, Everything feels wholesome and perfect like you're actually there. Now we could glaze the world building more for all the refined light novel readers. The light novel readers trying to replicate an anime character voice while reading a light novel. <laughs> would love that just so they could go in the comments and be like, eh, 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 if you thought that was good, wait till you read. Do I look like the type of person to read? You don't know the real ReZero. The real ReZero doesn't start until episode 18. The real ReZero doesn't start until end of season 2. The real ReZero doesn't start until the end of episode- Shut the fuck up. The real ReZero has already started. Just fucking enjoy the anime. Light novel gatekeeping is one of the most cringe fucking behaviors ever. Well, if we hit 50,000 subscribers by January, Woo! I will read the entire light novel collection. 50k? I didn't even realize I didn't like reading that much. But now that we've established that I'm illiterate, it's time to show that ReZero's evolution and what the comparison to One Piece really is. Because it does not stop for me, and I'm curious if other people saw this connection. Okay. Well. We immediately get a One Piece S. Um, I mean, beyond just like the setting, is there something similar to One Piece? Maybe in terms of how this will go, because like there's an attack arc and a counterattack arc for ReZero based on the scheduling of the episodes. And One Piece, when they went to Water 7, there's like a... Basically, the attack arc is Water 7, where it's just like, we got fucked up. But then, there's a counterattack at Annie's lobby, right? Maybe there's some parallels there? Curveball thrown at us, and revealing that Anastasia's political party has greatly been influenced by Japan, mm. and someone 400 years ago Hoshin. was isekai into this world, That's just right. like Subaru. Which, by the way, they just nonchalantly threw that shit in there like it was common information. But that wasn't right. It's cut content that should have been mentioned in season one, but the anime didn't. And they do something like this again later on, but I thought this... The fuck? What's Rem doing there for Heinkel? But I thought this was mega cool. Like, it felt like we got Void Sentry stuff with Joy Boy in terms of having our main characters interact with a world that already had a hero. Now, that is a theory, but I do want to make this proclamation right now. Put okay. it in writing. I think... Whoever this guy is mm. that came before Subaru Hoshin. is going to be a mega bad guy by the end. But anyway. He's already dead. He's a regular dude that died.
he doesn't exist. Maybe his soul could have been transferred to a different body. Maybe. But as far as I know, this is just a human that got isekai, that did many things for Kadaragi. And he has an idiom. Potion of the banana or something about like, don't piss him off or he'll graze your entire fucking city down, right? Is the reason I feel this was so One Piece is because of the way we got the information. As someone that used to be exclusively covering One Piece on a failed channel with over 100 videos on it that performed very badly with that. I feel you, bro. YouTube stuff, it's hard to get into fucking algo for a specific niche. Being said, I am somewhat of an expert in the One Piece world, but One Piece often gives us characters dicking around, and then they throw them in a new area, letting them mingle for a bit, and then they subtly give us some super important piece of information, have us fuck off again for a bit, and then give us more information. Basically just amazing storytelling through foreshadowings, laying out little little hints here and there to make you think about what could happen. It continues to build up and by the time you're 600 chapters in, one little detail that was foreshadowed 600 chapters back suddenly is now the centerpiece of the story. A little less subtly and then have it fuck off again and then everything just goes to shit. And that's really similar to the structure here because they breeze past the prior Japanese guy who lived here while visually showing us rock gardens and sashimi, which sashimi is not very good in my opinion. I prefer regular. What did you just say? Sashimi is what? Regular sushi, Japan vlog in description. But the. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Sashimi is not very good in my opinion. I prefer regular sushi, Japan vlog. Hey, sushi, you like sushi. Let's take that let's let's take let's take that dislike back. Vlog in description, but these visual tells give us all the information we need to know. Whilst we get more depth behind the actual character Anastasia and the political landscape of the entire country. Throughout the whole episode, we get characterization pretty heavily on everyone, and we'll get to Reinhardt, William, and Garfield later, but keeping it to the candidates for now, Anastasia, as we can tell, is someone that does operate for the Evil Roxy. Well, I don't think their personality traits are similar at all, but if you kind of look at their hairstyles, maybe, right? Maybe. She's... I love how Priscilla calls her a vixen. ...does operate for the good of others, but also trying to position herself to be the best and use yep. her information to make sure she is the one getting the credit and the benefit, which is to... Yeah, at the end of the day, she's a shrewd businesswoman, right? She's going to offer mutual support, but she'll always come out on top. Doesn't mean that she's necessarily evil. She just hustling and you just gotta keep up with her big goal for every short powerful purple haired girl in anime and then we have rem light edition who is really strange rem light this juncture diet Zuri's rem still out on how good of a character she's gonna be given her loss of memories they're writing i feel like the loss of memory could help build her character even better due to tapping into the dainty ladylike side that the former Krush was never really showing because she had to be this absolute leader for the karsten family her accurately in the fact that she's somewhat going with the flow but still has good values just like amelia who is now a lot more confident that was like the best frame of amelia bro this is probably the most prettiest like amelia frame i've seen in the anime right here this one i was like damn this is a stunning just amelia frame a lot more confident and secure in her position but she's already been characterized in the prior seasons but the big one is priscilla, priscilla showing off that she does care for others and she stands on business multiple times throughout yeah she's a very interesting character because she obviously didn't have much moments to shine in season two at all in season one there were some moments but she was absent for the subjugation of the white whale yet somehow she has the equivalent clout of amelia's camp She's a sun princess, the bloody bride. She's supposedly... I don't know. I'm going to just assume she just killed her husband. That's what I'm also going to assume. And there's something interesting about her traits because we know that the royal Luganican family has blonde hair, red eyes, and the fang. Priscilla doesn't really match that, but it's very similar. The blonde is more orange-like. The red isn't, some, sometimes in different panels it's more red, and the fang doesn't exist, which makes me think that maybe she has some sort of diluted Luganican royal blood. And her entire personality, it does feel like Gilgamesh, right? About how she was fine with Liliana not joining her. Why? Because the world is mine, and I don't need my possessions to be right beside me. The entire world is my garden, and they can simply thrive in my garden. As in, like, even if you deny me, you're still mine because the world is mine. And, like, if you're also arrogant or prideful, it seems like Priscilla loves seeing dumbasses suffer. 
but at the same time, she really respects it, or at least finds it entertaining if you match her energy when felt was clashing. Priscilla seems to enjoy that. Liliana declining and kind of like standing on business and telling her about how I'm a bard and we have our own bard's pride. Priscilla seemed to like that. Subaru, when he was prideful, Priscilla found it entertaining. Subaru, when he started to lick Priscilla's feet because he gave up that ego for Amelia, it looked... That, that was like when she got really fucking mad. So just match her energy and she'll be favorable towards you, I think. And she stands on business multiple times throughout the episode using the classic anime trope of showing them off one way in public and then twisting them around and making them great people behind the scenes. Similarly, with Felt. Also, yeah, Felt right over here, right? Look at the, the red eye blonde hair. This is the Lugunikin princess right here. Who I guess is about the same as we thought, but you can tell there's going to be a section of the story where they're going to show everything between her and Reinhard. I think that Felt had amazing characterization shown. She's so much more confident. Even her body language, just like the way she's sitting. And I never knew how Felt was actually the one that could potentially save Reinhardt from his family drama. Reinhardt is this overpowered godlike figure in the story. Yet, when Heinkel showed up with Priscilla and stuff, Reinhardt was looking down and Wilhelm stuff. You know, there's some family drama. And then Felt is like, nah, don't worry, I'll figure it out. Put your, keep your head up and look proud, Reinhardt. That's all you gotta do. It shows you how much she's matured over the year. And like, she's also rallying all the poor people, right? <laughs> the people in poverty, all the different people back in the slums. So I think that last episode has shown us that Felt has grown a lot. Relationship got so close. But this is what changed ReZero for me, is because we know the goals of all these candidates now. We know how they tick, we know what they value, and I hope we see all of their cities. Because as we've seen with stories like One Piece and Mishoku Tensei, the audience needs to see the places the characters are fighting for, and live in it for themselves in order to care for it. But let's jump into the most One Piece of One Piece things that happened throughout the whole episode, and that's okay. Garfield. Because a character going on a solo mission after figuring out he isn't the strongest man in the world. Now, if that doesn't scream, Yes, this is a battle shonen main character having an internal dialogue with this inner tailed beast about power. Power, I need to be number one and I love it. It's a character going on a solo mission after figuring out he isn't the strongest man in the world. Now, if that doesn't scream One Piece, I don't know what does. But he goes on a wholesome adventure where he saves two kids to return them home and seemingly runs into his mother at the yeah. end. Now, I really don't know where this is going and Garfield has a lot of development already. But him dealing with power insecurities to him now running into... Garfield is in an interesting mental state. The Reinhardt stuff was already a frog out of the well situation, but seeing the mom now, it's just like, it's gonna make him even more volatile. He's already having skits of delusion with Elsa in his head. And now, this arc, is this gonna be good for us? Or maybe Garfield will just go berserk and not be able to control himself. Development already, but him dealing with power insecurities to him now running into his mom kinda sounds like a Kung Fu Panda plot. And I hope this isn't gonna take away too much from the other stuff this season. But who knows, it may be more interesting than it seems, but I feel like we saw him deal with similar types of mental hurdles last season. I'm not sure giving Garfield a long lost mother is the right direction, but who knows? But a similar potential distraction, but probably gonna be a really cool part of the season, is a whole love triangle with William Reinhardt and his dad. Now their drama in this episode kind of came out of nowhere, but it was really good, and I really like this trope in anime when a perfect character like William is revealed to have an imperfect past, and it's probably yeah. something along the lines of him being hellbent on the whale after his wife died. There and like, it's crazy how, again, you think that the Von Austria family, or should I say the Austria family, they're like these perfect people, right? Sword masters, so powerful, but you know what? No one can escape family drama. And Heinkel, I feel like it's not his fault. He's probably some sort of victim to all of this, and we're gonna have some sort of sad backstory, and we're gonna probably feel bad about it, because, you know, he was introduced as such an asshole, and we're all hating him right now, but maybe there's some amazing character development. William is revealed to have an imperfect past, and it's probably something along the lines of him being hellbent on the whale after his wife died, therefore neglecting his family, leading to his son turning out to be a dead pee, and him not having a great relationship with his grandson. Yeah, the Reinhardt stuff was because he admonished Reinhardt for slaying Teresia. Who knows what the hell happened there? I'm still gonna blame Pandora for everything because that's the, the easiest cop-out fucking excuse. And then Heinkel stuff? Well, Teresia is the mom, right? I don't know, there's a lot of family drama that we need to get more of. The idea of him giving someone like Reinhardt daddy issues is really weird. It feels like the equivalent of giving someone like Gojo daddy issues. It's like Reinhardt is very clearly the strongest character. Yeah, he's the strongest character. But even the strongest character can be put in his play through politics and diplomacy, right? The Reinhardt assets, the Von Auster assets, they all belong to Heinkel. And like, 
it's not that easy, you know? We're, our, our, felt to set our entire livelihood is hanging on this fucking drunk asshole. So, like, making him to be a bad guy is not a good look. In series from my anime only opinion so why would he even be bothered by having a dad who doesn't care about him but you can tell this is more about william and reinhardt's dad relationship than anything i think the dad is going to play the perfect role in spicing up william he's mm. one of those toe gs characters and i think he's going to end up being a fan i think that he might be more of like a paul character for mushoku tensei i don't know actually a toji character what's a toji character a Toji character is someone that actually loved his son but went away for reasons to protect his child and even though he seemed cold, he actually does care about his son. Or is that the kind of direction that he's gonna go? I'm not sure. And favorite. So with all those moments, we gotta talk about one last thing, the crazy witch. And my god, I feel like all of us were watching this episode like, this is ReZero, something is gonna happen at the end, and yeah. boom, she goes crazy. And we were like, yeah, but Subaru is different now. Between Eggnog or Satella, someone's going to pop out with some of that black smoke and, and Subaru is going to actually save the day. They had shown him training earlier, but then Subaru starts cheering on and you were like, hold up, wait a minute. Authority a of Wrath. Su Su Subaru-kun? Why are you letting him dangle over Authority building? of Wrath. And, and they gave this kid a fucking impact scene. One Punch Man season two didn't even get that. But the witch True. voice actor nailed it. And it's clear. It's not a witch, Archbishop, just a simple mistake. Here ...that we are getting down to business this season. So if you enjoyed this, check out my video on the most underrated anime of the year. <laughs> oh, Maki? I don't think it's... Uh, maybe it is underrated. I do love the Maki and Glaze, but... This video... A lot of One Piece comparison, which I appreciate. A lot of just, like, other characterizations. That was a nice little video. Please go give a like on the video if you like. Here's the link, guys. Check out his channel if you haven't. He makes some other videos that we've checked out before, too. Regarding like, I don't know. What was it? Was it like Mishoku Tensei? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like this video, right? But that's it from me. I'll see you next time.